have the first example for these topics, we have a lead bullet of mass m is fired into a tree trunk and emerges on the other side. So the speed of the bullet is uh, 300 meter per second as it enters and 80 meter per second as it emerges. <clears throat> so assuming that 60% of the loss in kinetic energy is stored as heat in the bullet, Calculate the rise in the temperature of the bullet. The specific heat of the bullet is 0 0.03 kilocalories per kilogram Celsius. Okay. So, we are looking for what? Calculate the rise in temperature of the bullet. So, that is change in temperature because we are asked to find rise in temperature. So, change in temperature is the one that is required to be found. Okay. So, let's say that this is the tree trunk, of course, and... Let's have a drawing here, just a simple bullet. And then this bullet goes through the tree trunk. Okay. Okay, so let me just copy paste this one into here. So the velocity is 300 meter per second, right? As it enters. And then it emerges on the other side the bullet is only now 80 meter per second okay so what do we do from here okay <clears throat> so now of course uh we'll be using now what we call the energy balancing so energy balancing is what we uh use here okay so energy balance is stated in the problem so the equation that we'll be using is usually uh stated in the problem now as stated in the problem we have here 60%, um, right? 60% of the kinetic energy loss, right? 60% loss in kinetic energy. And yeah, let's just have Ke. So uh, it's stored as heat in the bullet. So let's just call that heat as Q. So this Q is the absorbed heat by the bullet. Okay, heat absorbed by the bullet. Okay, but um, take note of this one that remembered since that is loss, okay, that is loss, so this one should be negative okay, because it's loss. Okay, so writing now uh, the equation, rewriting the equation now, so 60% is also equal to 0 0.6, right? So that is negative 0 0.6 times Ke, the kinetic energy. Now, what is the kinetic energy, right? So, kinetic energy, the formula for that one is 1 half mv squared, okay? That's 1 half mv squared. That is change in kinetic energy, right? Because that is loss. So, we have the change in kinetic energy. So, it should be... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it should be 1 half mv Okay. 1 half m times the final velocity squared minus uh, initial velocity squared, right? That's 1 half v2 squared minus v1 squared. That is change because that is change in kinetic energy. So uh, v2 squared minus v1 squared, okay? All equal to, of course, the uh, unit, uh, the formula for Q is just mc delta t. And the c is already given. May MC delta T. As you can see, we have a common... Uh, okay, C is already given by 0 0.03, right? And we have a common uh, parameter here, which is equal to... Okay, let me just write the value for C. That's kilocal per uh, kilogram per Celsius. Okay. So... What should we do next? Ah, uh, yeah, the we have a common parameter here. We can cancel out m. <clears throat> there you go. So canceling out m and then rewriting the uh, equation. Okay. So the one that we are looking for is delta t. So rewriting the equation without the m, of course, because this is already cancelled. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. Okay, so let's no, let, let's just check the units first, okay? So let's uh check the units first. Just the unit, okay? Just the unit. I'll be writing just a unit. Of course, the left side is kinetic energy, right? So it should be in joules. Okay, so joules is equal to I'm just writing the units, ah, huh? the units. We just have to check the units if it's uh, consistent. So we have kilogram for M, of course, and C, the unit for C is kilocal, kilogram per solution. So just remember that units also follow the law of algebra. And then, of course, change in temperature, this should be in Celsius. Okay, so um, now let's cancel out what we can. Okay. So if you do this, you should have the same unit on the uh, both sides, of course, to be it consistent. Now, canceling the units that we have, of course, we have we can cancel out kilogram and we can cancel out Celsius. Okay, so canceling out kilogram and Celsius. <clears throat> so as you can see, we are left with kilocal. That is not equal to joules. Okay, so what do we do? We have to uh, use some uh, con uh, conversion factor here. So we have to have to make it either we make the joules into kilocal or the kilocal into joules. So what is the uh, conversion factor that we can use here? So the conversion factor that we uh, we can use here is 3.6 times 10 raised to 6 joules is also equal to 860 kilocal. Okay, so this is the function the conversion factor that we can use. Okay, so it's, as you can see here, we can now cancel kilocal and then uh, kilocal on the denominator and then we will be left with uh, just joules. Okay, so th therefore, upon uh, writing the equation, we have to add this conversion factor, which is a 3.6 times 10 raised to 6 all over 860. Okay, okay so uh, I think we can now write the uh, formula. So remember that this is very important, the unit. So writing, writing the equations that we have, uh, of course, uh, already disregarding the M because that's already cancelled. So one half times V2 minus V1 squared, right? So I think I can now write the uh, values. That's 80 squared minus 300 squared. That's, those are the velocities all equal to. So M is already cancelled, right? <coughs> So let's write uh, C, the value for C, that is uh, 0 0.03. Okay, I won't be writing the units anymore because, because we were able to uh, verify that the units is already uh, correct. But we have, don't forget to add the conversion factor here, which is a 3.6 times 10 raised to 6 joules all over 860 kilocal. Okay, so all you have to do now is just, uh, it's just, Compute for the delta T. So approximately using your calc, you will have here a value of 199.71, uh, 199.71, this is in Celsius, right? Okay, this is Celsius. Now, however, this is already your final answer. But what uh, the problem if it has choices, the problem here is, this 199.71 Celsius, it might not be in the choices, okay? Now, what might be in the choices is uh, other units, of course. Now, remember that 199.71 in Celsius, since we are talking about change, that is also equal, equally equal to uh, 199.71 Kelvin, because we're talking about change in temperature, okay? So remember that they are just the same when we are only talking about in change in temperature, okay? So you don't have to do any conversion. You can just convert it directly, okay? So uh, whatever uh, is available on the choices, you can have 199.71 Celsius. If that is not available on the choices, maybe the 199.71 Kelvin is the one that, that is available, okay? So I think that's it, and let's move on to the next one. Okay, so let's have the second one. So find the amount of electrical energy expended in rising the temperature of 45 liters of water by 75 degrees Celsius. So assume efficiency of heating equipment is 90%. Okay, so let's write down the givens first. So what are the givens? We have 
um, 45 liters and 75 degrees, right? So remember, that is delta T, okay? Because that is rise, rising in the temperature. So it should be the delta T or change in temperature. So 75 degrees and we have a volume of 45 liters. So we are looking for, oh yeah, this is water, okay? So this is water. Okay? So we, are, we also have to consider this one. And we have an efficiency of 90%. Okay, so what is required we are looking for? We are required to find electrical energy, right? Electrical energy. Let's just call it EE. Okay, electrical energy. So the unit for this one. Okay, I don't know yet what is the unit for this one. So let's just proceed to the solution. So solution again by energy balancing stated in the uh, stated in the uh, problem, of course. So the energy balancing is, since it is assumed that the efficiency of heating equipment is only 90%, therefore, the heat that will be received by the water will only be 90% of the electrical expended. Of course, right? So 90% of the EE must be equal to uh, the, the Q or the Q uh, received or absorbed by the water okay so q this is <clears throat> absorbed by the water okay now what do we do from here so of course uh 90 percent is also 0.9 ee is equal to q of course, Q is again MC delta T only, right? MC delta T. Okay, but we have to consider that the C that we're looking for is the C of water or the sp specific heat of water. Now, from this point, what is the next step? Okay, right, so we don't, we already have C. No, we don't, we... We are looking for, we have delta T, right? And we are looking for EE. So E is the unknown. We have delta T, but we don't have mass and the specific heat of water, which is CW. Now, what we can do here is we can use the density, the volume density. There you go. So volume density, of course, that is just uh, mass over volume right <clears throat> so mass over volume and then rewriting this equation to find mass we have to find mass right mass is equal to uh, rho that's the volume density times the uh, volume now what is rho now as you can see that uh, rho or water rho of water that is mostly our reference so that is all mostly equal to often equal to one but the problem is what is the unit the unit for this one is gram per cubic centimeter or this is also equal to one kilogram per liter so which one should we use of course so in this case we'll be using the one kilogram per liter because why because the <clears throat> because the given in volume is also in liters okay so writing the raw of water that's one kilogram per liter times the volume okay the volume is what 45 liters so we'll be using the one kilogram per liter because the given is also in liter. So that's 45 liters. And then we can simply get the answer. So as you can see, we get, uh, liters will be canceled. Therefore, the final, uh, no, not yet the final answer. The, the answer for the mass is 45 kilograms. So we already have the uh, mass. Okay, so we have the mass and we have... Uh, yeah, we can already solve for this one, I think. So this is... Uh, 0 0.9 EE, E is the one that we are looking for, and mass is 45 kilograms. And what's CW? Again, this is mostly one because this uh, water is uh, usually the reference. Okay, and delta T. I think we already have delta T, right? Delta T is 75, um, 75 degrees. Okay. 
So since this is already in change in temperature, so 75 degrees Celsius is also equal to 75 uh, Kelvin. Again, you don't have to do any conversion here or add to 73 because of this change in temperature. So you can just write here directly 75 Kelvin. Okay, so uh, looking for the answer, final answer EE. So this is equal to, uh, all you have to do is just divide the answer by 0.9, right? So what you'll be getting here is 3,750 kilocalories. However, the kilocalories, that is not a unit for electrical energy, right? That's not the electrical energy expended. So we should, uh, we should uh, convert the unit from here. So the conversion unit that we'll be using, the conversion factor is 1 kilowatt hour is, all, is also equal to 860 kilocal. Okay, so uh, using that conversion factor, you'll have a final answer of 4.3605 <clears throat> kilowatt hour. And then this will be our final answer. <clears throat> I think that's it and let's have the next one.